Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Spin all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl love and tea. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. So we are back with another podcast and I got my girl B.L. Sherelle in the house today with me. Hey, sis. What's up, y'all? Man, I'm doing good. To be back. <laughs> it's been a long day, but I'm hanging in there. And I know me and you've been trying to get together for about a week or so now to talk about all this stuff that's going on in the drill industry. I don't know about the drill industry. Just drill music. It's causing a lot of headway. Um, it's been a lot going on just over the past few months in the summer in general. We'll get into that. But what really has sparked this conversation is that the new mayor of New York, he found out recently what drill rap was, because I guess he's not, you know, he's not into drill rap like that, but he has a teenage son who let him know that a lot of these killings in New York have been escalating due to the drill music scene in Brooklyn and especially the Bronx. So the mayor of New York, um, Eric Adams, he's saying that at this point in time, he wants drill music removed. And so this has been all over the news. And once he said that he wanted to hold um, the rappers responsible and he wants to get rid of drill music, it caused a lot of rappers like Mano and Fat Joe and all of them to come out the woodwork and they wanted to meet with the mayor. So I'm going to go ahead and play the clip right now um, that came out last week of these rappers meeting with the mayor. So we're going to go ahead and listen to it and then we'll talk about it talk about um, drill music. This is a lot of talk about the violence that's associated with it. One on one with Brooklyn rapper Mano. Mano just brought some of the biggest names in hip hop to City Hall, including rapper Fabio Foreign. And so the man can get a, a real perspective and a real understanding of what drill rap is. In recent weeks, two drill rappers have been murdered in Brooklyn. Friday Mayor Eric Adams expressed his concerns over drill songs and videos posted to social media that reference ongoing gang wars, telling PIX11 News. It is alarming. Nobody was talking to the direct artist that comes from that element. Mano says he went to City Hall hoping to set the record straight. Conversation gets deep because, it's, you know, um, a lot of these kids, they in gangs before they even made a rap, a rap record. So is it is it the music? I don't think it's the music that's uh, 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 getting uh, the average person to do crime. After his sit down with hip hop leaders today, the mayor expressed. Violent people who are using drill rapping to post who they killed and then antagonize the people who they are going to kill is what the problem is. And they heard me. Contrary to recent headlines declaring the mayor wants to shut down or crush drill music, Mayor Adams made clear he's committed to working with the hip hop community. Jelani Ray is a music industry executive and the founder of Guns for Grants. The mayor also let it be known that, you know, we have uh, a responsibility as being influencers and uh, the rappers that were there. Drama, controversy, and concern over rap lyrics certainly isn't new. 30 years ago, they wanted to ban Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. Mano hopes the new open dialogue between rappers and the mayor will lead to a new partnership that works to ensure hip hop lyrics don't lead to real life violence. We're going to be rolling out something in the next few days to deal with this issue. It was a great conversation. I was happy to have them there. All right. So y'all just watched that clip. Y'all heard it. Now, I find this whole situation really interesting that now that the mayor wants to ban it, all of these rappers are trying to step up and say it's not the music. It's a form of expression and things like that. And granted, we had, you know, gangster rap in the 90s. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we mm -hmm. see how that turned out. I felt like it was a lot of excuses coming from Mano and the crew. Okay. Oh. So, so I feel I like, okay, so first New York, right, it has experienced a tremendous uptick in their murder rate specifically. Mm -hmm. I think they have like a 47% jump between from like around 2013, 2014 to now. They had close to 500 murders last year. So they, they are in them same numbers with, you know, Philly and Memphis and all those other places. Mm -hmm. But I 
what I didn't like about what the mayor did is he only talked about the music. The music is just the symptom. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just the symptom of a bigger problem. So for him to only focus on the music as if, and, 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 and more so just the videos, really, he was really, he really had this concentrated focus on the video. So for him to just only focus on the videos is very, I guess, misleading or, you know, whatever you want to call it to think that that is the source of the problem. It's just the newest something that we've, we're dealing with. Like we always dealing with some shit in the black community. Right. Right. But also for like, he was just posturing. I don't think, cause how do you ban drill music in New York? How does that even happen? Like, what does that even look like? So I feel like a part of it was him also capping. The murder rate is super high. He knew in the office. They're going to put pressure on him. It don't help that he black. And he also got a law enforcement background. I think he did like 20 years in the um, police, uh, for total uh -huh. police in New York. Mm -hmm. So he has all this. So I think that the moderate that he is, he wants to implement certain, you know, racist policies that may have been working. I mean, because stop and frisk was a thing when their murder rate was super low. Mm -hmm. And then they got rid of stop and frisk and, you know, some other things have taken place. But I feel like he's just posturing to do whatever, to put whatever type of laws that he wants to put. Um, and he's just purposely blaming that. Like, that's the only circumstance. And it's definitely not. It's just a symptom. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you. I definitely believe that it's also being used to push a political agenda. I feel like when we have conversations like this, like, you know, he's meeting with these rappers the conversation to me is always disingenuous on both parts. And this is why, like you said, blaming these kids, these 16, 17, 18 year old kids, that's the symptom. But are they going to address the core issues? Like why these kids even turn to gangs in the first place? Right. You know, these broken inner city families, the school systems broken, the lenient prosecution of crime now in New York. <laughs> okay. Um, and then you have the rappers end where they're like, well, this is just, you know, it's just music. It's just us rapping about a lifestyle. It doesn't mean that folks should go out and, and do it. But to me, that's also disingenuous because, again, if you can glorify death, because let's keep it real. Where does, what, what is the meaning behind drill music? It comes from Chicago. And if you're from the Midwest, to drill is another term for killing. Yes. Or, criminal, or criminal activity. Yes. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so this, when you break it down, you know, to the to the infinite details, this is kill music, but we yeah. just call it drill. So for me, it's like you guys are glorifying killing and murders and, you know, talking about your dead ops. Imagine if they took that same energy and glorified getting a good job, you know what I'm saying, getting good grades, cleaning up their neighborhood, doing the right thing. So we can't act like music doesn't influence both ways. You know, yeah, see, yeah, absolutely. And I agree. Now, if they were talking about those things, though, they wouldn't be as heavily invested in as they are now. But we're going to get to that later. To that. <laughs> what, what, right. What 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 I think, though, if of course, if you take the same money. So the things that create these types of environments is, you know, education, food, housing, right, mental and physical health, all these things, if they were to actually invest in those things then maybe we wouldn't have these symptoms. But I am glad that he at least started the conversation, right? right. Like even if it leads to nothing on his part, um, I am glad that he's at least talking about it. That way it can ignite other states to talk about it, right? Because there is something we do have to figure out what we're going to do about this. We yeah. do have to figure out if we're going to just be completely desensitized to kids being murdered and everybody's just making money and enjoying the music and ignoring what's happening. We do have to talk about this on a national scale. So I'm glad that he actually brought it up. You know what I mean? To like, to discuss it. Yeah, and in yeah. London, right? Uh -huh. In London, mm -hmm. they actually have, um, cause you know, they big and drill over there too. Oh yeah. They have this statistic. I don't know how they proved it, but they said one in three killings in London is drill related, quote unquote. But this, their style is knife violence. So mm -hmm. they yeah, knife. There. Right. And they're very, very strict on like their drill music and stuff. That's why they always kind of masked up in the videos and shit. Because mm -hmm. they'll take them videos down real quick over there. You know, they they are not as tolerant as we are over here. And even though they are experiencing a crazy upshoot in child murder, 
I think that theirs is a little more contained because it's not as free reign. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they don't have the access to weapons that we have over here. So I do feel like it's a conversation that's worth having. Definitely. And because even when you go to the comment sections of some of these videos, um, you can tell like a lot of these kids are so desensitized. Um, so we can talk about K-Flop. Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.